Thanks, David. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chandra Sharma, and I work as a watershed specialist with the uh, Toronto and Region Conservation Authority. We are the other representative from Toronto. With me are my team uh, members, Harris Sussman, who is the project manager on climate adaptation, and Stuart Redfield, who is our communications and program manager. Let me, uh, I'm wearing two hats today. So um, we received this funding from Greece, and that partnership was very important for us because we also coordinate in Ontario a pan-provincial climate consortium working with the universities and end users. And our job really is to take that climate research that takes place within the university and bring it out uh, for the use of, uh, you know, our municipalities and other public sector and private sector partners. At the same time, look at the needs of our municipalities and, and inform university research. We've just started. It's been uh, in operation for uh, one, one and a half year, and we're hoping to uh, achieve some, some wonderful things uh, working with our university partners. My real job uh, working with the Conservation Authority, and by way of context, uh, we are on, uh, located on Great, uh, Lake, Great Lakes, Lake Ontario. There are 36 conservation authorities. We were established uh, for the purpose of flood management and natural resource management in Ontario. They're very unique to Ontario, and we've done a great job at adaptive management, uh, looking at flood control and uh, watershed management work that we do. Now, uh, within this context, our networks with those 36 conservation authorities, they have over 440 municipalities that they work with. So the network is huge. And for us to work as a boundary organization, um, it, it makes so much sense to reach out through our networks to those end users and, uh, and universities where the research and science is taking place. Now, to give you a little bit of context on this project, in green, you'll see the map of Peel Region. It's the sixth largest municipality in Canada. And uh, the, what's interesting here is the layers of governance. There is two conservation authorities that regulate floodplains. There is three local municipalities. Uh, they have their own jurisdiction on services. And there is the regional municipality, plus the province that dictates regional planning in the province of Ontario. So uh, any, any planning initiatives, uh, forget about climate change, it's really forward thinking, becomes a challenge. So this is a real uh, good forward thinking piece of work that took place in Ontario. There's a case study available and I can make it available if, if, you, if you like, uh, on how these five agencies come together and develop this climate change strategy. Now one of the foremost thing in this climate change strategy was to look at uh, risk assessment of sectors that impact Peel Region's economy. And in order to do that, there were two things that were really, really important. One is to get decision-ready climate information for uh, practitioners to do their work. And uh, second was to engage stakeholders uh, within that region. And that's what uh, you know we did working with uh, GLISA. So in terms of what we did as part of this project, and Harry's going to talk about the approach, is basically we took a look at what climate information was available and translated that uh, as decision-ready climate information. The other thing was there were so many risk assessment frameworks available. Practitioners really do not know which one to use and how to use. So I think we we developed one with the help of Lisa and looked at some of the existing frameworks and we're helping uh, Region Appeal undertake climate assessment in two sectors. Um, we get, we're giving them guidance on how to deal with uncertainty and um, this will kickstart. We're applying this information in, in two sectors and we're hoping after Greece the project has ended, we'll be working with Peel Region to look at all the other sectors uh, later on. Thank you. After the response to my question, we should probably cross that last point about entering Kickstarter adaptive risk management <laughs> would be appropriate. So the approach that we took was really three-pronged. The first element was to identify the important issues, um, hazards, and needs that were relevant to stakeholders and develop the climate risk analysis based on those needs. 
as opposed to what we sort of interpreted as being the most important. The third stage was then really to prioritize which adaptation measures would, would result in the greatest risk reduction. So right now, the, the current focus is really on those latter two, uh, but we are moving towards the third, um, sort of in, in, in conjunction or simultaneously. So the, the overall way the project was implemented was by developing this consistent climate data uh, and risk information across the entire region and then applying it to specific um, sectors, um, in this case agriculture in the northern part of the region and um, looking at a community of poor credit right on the shores of Lake Ontario. So we could look at one aspect of a, a kind of um, sector-based case study and then an integrated community where there were multiple different risks. The stakeholder engagement was at the core of our project. That's why we were quite interested in working with Lisa. Uh, and that was done through, through workshops that were facilitated with stakeholders. We did semi-structured interviews. And we also, the, the entire structure of the project was designed so that we could try and incorporate um, all aspects of stakeholder preferences throughout the development and implementation. So the climate information was, as I said before, specifically designed for stakeholders. So we actually developed 21 different variables that were of interest to very specific interactions of systems with the climate. And we used an ensemble approach of um, historical and future climate projections to try and maximize the uncertainty that we were incorporating. And we used a fairly parsimonious approach of just using the basic uh, delta method of taking the change between the current and historic period to try and get a sense of future time horizon change. Within the projections, we used um, data from the most recent uh, IPCC report, and we took from a moderate change scenario and as well a, uh, a higher change scenario. And this allowed us to produce, the, for this, for those of you who may be statistically um, phobic, this is just a graph of a cumulative probability distribution, which allows us to get a sense of the relative probability of different uh, climate conditions occurring. And that was the basis for the analysis, um, was using these probabilities. So that we're not framing things in terms of absolutes, but instead of kind of odds, which was of interest to people. This is just a graphic to, to illustrate that we use baseline data, which is gridded across the entire region. And then the larger uh, square there is the, is the global climate model projection, which we apply to every thing. And this resulted in a set of projections where there's this sort of ensemble mean that, um, and uncertainty that allowed, allowed people to understand hopefully the uncertainty around the information. The, this is just a diagram to show the preferences of different climate events, you know, which ones were more or less important. We then tried to understand the probability of certain impacts arising when those happen. And we then would link that to the climate change projections, ultimately to get a final estimate of risk. And this is kind of ongoing. And the final outcomes really, as Chandra mentioned, are this methodology, along with increased awareness, hopefully more in the community, identification of adaptation. And we do have some video with which uh, 